The average solo GP is dead. Being handcuffed to a practice that only makes money while you're drilling crushes your freedom. Being trapped at the office is no way to experience life. And doing more fillings and crowns ain't the answer to freedom. Stop it. Freedom comes when your practice makes money without you. Freedom is choosing how many days and how you dental. Ready to forge your freedom? Then keep listening to become a super GP and super CEO. This is the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Let's go. Hello, all you beautiful people, and welcome to the latest and greatest episode of the Titanium Practice Podcast. I'm your host and personal freedom coach, Dr. Stephen Freeman. How are y'all doing today? Hope you're all doing well. Hope you are all making experiences with your loved ones. I had a very small experience. It wasn't really that exciting, to be honest with you. I was out for a walk with my wife the other day. And so we're walking along... And we're walking the dog, and the dog does the thing that every dog does and sniffs every little bit along the way. And I've been trying to do that more. Like, I've got a little dog, so I never like the big dogs. I mean, I guess the big dogs can be cooler, but I always go over to my neighbor's house that have, like, the big dogs, and they always come up to you, and they, like, knock over my beer with their tail that's sitting on the coffee table or comes up and greets you by like sniffing you in your crotch and you're just like, well, hey, nice to meet you, dog. But we got the smaller dog and we bring him along and about halfway through the walk, you normally have to like pick him up and actually carry him along. But I just heard recently that it was like, you shouldn't be thinking about, you know, even my dog gets enough exercise by running around in the yard. He needs mental stimulation as well. And that's why you should take your dog for a walk. So I took the dog for the walk with my wife. And we're walking along and there's a, there's one of those like dog poop stations along the way, you know, as, as we're going along the walk and, and, a, and, a, and a truck pulls up and they've done this before. And I've actually seen these trucks elsewhere as I'm out driving around and whatnot. And a guy pops out, you know, he checks the bags and like, grabs the poop and like throws it in the back of the truck so like the the little bags go into the big bag and put the big bag in the back of the truck he's driving around with this giant truck bed full of dog poop and i'm thinking to myself and i'm thinking back to something one of my mentors said to me and my mentor said to me if you will go where others will won't you can make a ton of money doing that. And I never, ever pass judgment at all on anybody's job. I was watching the show once. It was called How I Became a Millionaire. And this guy, he, this is one of the ones that stuck out to me the most. He, he, he had one, he owned a corn field. And then around Halloween time, he does the whole thing where, you know, he tricks it out with, you know, with slides and, you know, face painting and all this other thing and, 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 and a corn maze. And so he has this huge revenue stream that comes in from what was basically, you know, just a, a corn field that's making no money for him or very little money for him for most of the year. And he gets this idea and, you know, he's going to do the corn maze. And then he ends up creating a business that he designs corn mazes for all the corn fields that do this thing where they do these pop-up things around Halloween time and creates all the corn mazes in the world. And it makes millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of this. And I was like, how cool is that? How cool is that? Like, think about what you did to get your dental license. Think about it. I mean, think about the hoops you jumped through, the loans you took out to do it, The time you spent to become a dentist, the things you need to do between, you know, Mrs. Jones being pissed at you because her tooth hurts, even though she didn't get the work done that you told her to get a year before, and now the tooth hurts and she's mad at you, even though you had taken a care a year ago, probably wouldn't be hurting right now. I mean, just think of all the crap and hoops you jumped through to make your money. And this guy's like, I'm going to design corn mazes. Now... 
Obviously, that might be fraught with some type of work that he has to do behind the scenes that I don't know about, bullshit that he needs to do that I don't understand or know about. But I'm like, that guy designs core maces. How cool is that? Like, how simple of a thing is that to be able to make millions of dollars off of and bring joy to children around the world? I mean, that sounds pretty awesome. So I never, you never know who's a millionaire, especially now. Especially now, I mean, the the whole, you had... um, who was it? The Ritz. The Ritz redid their entire list of like, you know, how they address their guests because you never know who's a millionaire anymore. You never know how they made their money. You can't look at someone and know that. You can't make that assumption because there are there are unlimited ways to make a buck these days. And I applaud everyone for every way that they ever did it. Good for you. That's awesome. That's very cool. So this guy's got the business to go around and pick up dog poop. And I'll bet you, judging from the number of trucks that I see in the area, he's making a shit ton of money. I mean, how great is that? You hire someone to go pick up dog poop and they went somewhere that other people won't. What about the 1-800-GOT-JUNK guy? I mean, aside from a great name, (laughs) think about what he did. He created a multi-billion dollar company because he went and said, I am going to pick up junk. I'm going to pick up junk. And you're going to pay me to do it because A, you don't want to do it. B, you don't know what to do with it once you've got it loaded up. But I'm going to take care of all of that for you. And I'm going to remove this from your life. I'm going to get this clutter and junk out of your way. So the the founder of 1-800-JUNK went, or got junk, went to a space where others would not go. So how does that apply to you? What can you do and go to that others will not? I'll tell you right now, the simplest one is what I keep telling you to do. Do specialty procedures. Go to where the other generous general dentist will not do, and they want to just stay solo, average GPs doing fillings, doing crowns, but they don't want to move into the space that will raise them up as a clinician and also raise your practice up then too. See, if you're not doing it, you don't know the fact that once you start doing this, it was it's a form of marketing. It's a form of marketing. Because now you are going to be the person that A, doesn't send people out, which people don't want to go somewhere else. They don't want to go somewhere else. They, they hate, think about when you go to the doctor's office. You got to fill out how many forms? And if they've got an online way to do it or an, a computer way to do it, just, every time, I'm sorry, the computer's running a little bit slow today. Ah, oh, What? Every computer runs slow. Did you notice that? How the hell is that possible? You got to fill out all these forms. You got to go early because they say show up 15 minutes for your appointment time. Blah, 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 blah. You got to go find them. You don't know if you're going to like them. No one likes going to new places because it's different and people don't like change. They want to go to your office because they know you. They know you. They don't want to deal with somebody else's staff. You'd be amazed what kind of relationships your front office has with some of these patients. They know exactly how to handle a lot of the patients in your office because they just know what they're like. Well, that's good for the team member, but it's also good for the patient. The patient likes that. I mean, like, show cheers. It's an oldie. Go look it up if you don't know it, especially the theme song. 
But the part that I want you to know from the theme song is, I want to go where everybody knows my name. People love familiar, familiarity. They f love feeling like a family. This is helping a family member out if you don't have to go and send them to a stranger. People don't like strangers. You're literally taught as a child, stranger danger. <laughs> you can't be more simple than that. People are taught at a very young age, don't talk to strangers, fear strangers. Stranger, stranger, stranger. They don't want to go to strangers. And yes, at one point in time, you were a stranger to them. But now, in theory, they're part of your family. So now they don't want to leave you and go to a stranger because they don't know what to get. And they feel a little better because you refer them. And they're like, oh, this must be... You know, and that's great to think about that. The patient must be like, oh, you know, they must know each other really well. They must, you know, be buddies. That, And you must really be confident in the work that this specialist does. When in reality, how often is it that it's the most recent referral form brought to you because they sent Panera bagels to your office and it's now sitting on the top of your referral bin and so that's why they got referred there. <laughs> so they, like, cool, maybe you're gonna cut down on the amount of Panera referrals you're gonna get, which I should tell you, you're probably not because you're only gonna be keeping 80% of the stuff in your office and you're still gonna be referring 20% of the stuff out so you're probably going to still get your cookies and your pizzas and all that stuff, which is nice to get and it keeps the staff happy. But you're going to make your patient so much happier by keeping them in. It's a form of marketing. You're going to become the implant guru. You're going to become, oh man, I had a root canal done. I was so scared. So scared of having a root canal done. But you did such a great job. I told my entire block about you. They'll do that. And they're not going to do that for a filling. Oh my God, that was the most amazing filling I've ever had. Never, ever spoken by anybody. Maybe the fastest, you do a real quick little occlusal. So it's the fastest. And so they got out of there and like, well, that wasn't as terrible as I thought it was going to be, but that's not exactly a glowing review. Okay. It's not a glowing review, but, but you do braces on a, on a kid. Be like, oh yeah, every time we went in, it was great. We've known them all along. They told me it was going to take 24 months. It took 18 months and it looks perfect. And they did this thing where they kind of scan the teeth and they put trays on to put the, put the initial brackets on. And they said it was, you know, it was, it was perfectly placed brackets. And so that's why they were able to move quickly and do a great job. And it looks wonderful. And I made sure that, you know, we told Miss Rachel next door to send her and her three kids over and go get their braces from you. It's marketing. It's marketing. What it also is, is profit, which is what you're probably sore, sorely missing right at the moment. Your inflation skyrocketing, and it's only going up. It's only going up. Do not let this government lie to you and tell you that it's actually going down. It is not. It is going up. So you need to be more profitable. The higher dollar procedures allow you to be more profitable. The reason you can charge more for those procedures is because you're going to a space that others will not. The fewer people that can do something in this world, the more they get paid for doing it. There are 32 NFL starting quarterbacks in this world. 32 of them on the entire planet in the NFL. There are 8 billion people on this planet. That is why they get paid so much friggin' money. Is because there's only 32 people capable of doing it. And when you think about it, there's only 5 that are worth a damn. That number is actually growing right now, which is pretty cool. That's nice to see. Hopefully I'll bring about a little bit more parity in the NFL. Having said that, we just had back-to-back -back NFL Super Bowl champions with Taylor's team winning it twice. But... When you think about it, there's so few people that can do what they can do, that's why they get paid so much money. There are not that many people in this world that are capable of placing a dental implant. It's an incredibly small percentage. I believe there's about 300,000, and I may be wrong, I think there's like 150,000 dentists in the United States and there's like another 150,000 in the world. And I might be wrong about that second 150,000, but think about it, let's, let's just use that for simple math though. 
So there's 300,000 people on this planet that are given the certificate and training to be allowed, I should just say the certificate to be allowed to place a dental implant. But from there, it's only a tiny portion of that 300,000 that then get the training to go and do it. God, even if you make that 100,000 people, that's 100,000 people on this entire planet that can place a dental implant for 8 billion people. And they say half of Americans are missing a tooth. Half of Americans are missing a tooth. I'll bet you it's a lot higher in other countries. I've never looked up the data. I don't really care because there's enough Americans to place implants on here in America. I don't need to worry about the world numbers so much. But 100,000 people to help replace a tooth for 8 billion people. The numbers are on your side. But time is not. But I'm on your side too. That's the good news. Go to the space that others will not. That means learning how to do specialty procedures. That's where the profit is. Because again, if we're just now, let's go back to just the American population. There's roughly 320 million Americans. And there's roughly 150,000 150, dentists out there that can do a filling. Again, those aren't great. Again, the ratio is in your favor. You've chosen overall a job that the numbers favor you. That is why you make a decent salary. But you want it to be more than decent. That's why you're listening to the sound of my voice right now is because you want it to be more than decent. So how do you do that? You go to where others are not. Think about it. Every specialty makes more money than the, the general dentist, right? On, on average, on average. Every specialist specialty makes more money than the general dentist. And why is that? They specialize. They received advanced training to be able to do things that then cuts down on the number of people in this country capable of doing the things that they do. So they get paid more. It's not even necessarily that the procedures are harder. God bless America. I have placed way more class two composites that are harder than almost any implant I've ever done. Are there hard implants? Yes, they're absolutely hard implants to do. I would choose to do an implant over a class two composite every single day of the week, twice on Tuesday. Because they're faster. They have a higher dollar amount attached to them, making your time more valuable. So you need to go where others won't. That's what I obviously keep repeating to myself or myself to you about the fact that you need to be going where other people will not so that you can make more money. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are harder to do. Some of them are. Lateral sinus lift, don't do them, please. I don't care how far you get down your journey of doing these. <laughs> I've done enough lateral sinus lifts that I've done it. And every time I did it, I said, that, well, that's the last one of those I'm doing. I mean, you can, you can learn how to do them, but they're, for, the, for the amount of time and the difficulty of doing them, good Lord, just send those on down the road. I mean, you really want to get fancy, go ahead. God love you, because I, 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 I literally think, so like my mindset is, is that every moment, and it's the exact opposite mindset that you probably have, or most de general dentists have, is I actually feel like every time I walk into the operatory, I'm losing money. How do I get myself out of this operatory fast enough? I bet that's not how you think about it. You think this is where you make money. Nope, that's where you lose money. I make sure that I do a great job for the patient. I make sure that I do, when I meet a new patient, that I follow my three-minute rule of talking to them. I make sure 
that I joke with my patient when I go in and make them feel at ease and I take my time doing my anesthetic. I don't want to hurt the patient. Obviously, they still can sting and doing a palatal sucks. There's just no two ways about it. You're probably going to hurt them. But I do my best. I warn them. I talk them through it. I put them at ease. And I probably spend about as much time talking to them before the appointment as I do of actually doing the procedure. But when it's time to pick up that handpiece, I go. And I go fast. Because the longer I am doing that, the more money in my mind I am losing. So I want to get the hell out of there. But I'm going to do a fantastic job while I'm doing it. So it's your job to learn how to do it fast and do a great job fast. That's your job. I mean, I understand in dental school why it takes forever to do anything. You know, they gave you, you know, six hours to prep a crown. You take six hours. They gave you three hours. Take three hours. Give me an hour. Take an hour. But I don't know what mature general dentists are doing when they take forever to prep a crown, especially at a PPO fee. You better be able to prep that thing in about five minutes and it better look damn good when you're done doing it too. Because you are losing money every time you walk into that operatory. So if that's the case when you're walking in, you better be making some damn money. How do you do that? You do higher value procedures. You do a great job at ortho in such a way that you cut down on the number of visits that they actually need to come into your office because everything's going so well because you use indirect bonding trays that they have such great success with their orthodontics that they're not even coming in. They don't have to come in because you extend the amount of time between your checks with them because things are going along so hunky-dory. Because when they come in, you're losing money. So you got to do a great job, but you got to do it fast. Never, ever compromise patient care, but you've got to figure out how to do it faster. What are other ways that you can do things that others and go to a place that others are not? Do you have a patient-centric practice or do you have one that's focused on you? I kind of talked about the decor. What is the decor of your practice? Is it designed for you? Because you like pictures of your local sports team because you like pictures of your favorite band Who is your office designed for? Who is the music in your office playing for? Is it to entertain you? Because if you're at a certain stage of your life, you're certainly welcome to do that, but most of you aren't there. You're probably not listening to me if you're at that stage in your life where you can be doing that kind of practice. It needs to be for your patient. Walk into a DSO. Who's that office for? That office is for the private equity firm that owns it. That is who that office is for. Your office should not be designed for you. It should be designed for the patient. So I'd encourage you to listen to the Avatar podcast that talks about how to create, who is your ideal patient, and create and build an office that does nothing but talk to, speak to, smell like, attract, dazzle, your ideal patient. That is what it should do. That is what it should do. So I want to encourage you to think about what you can do that others are not doing. Is it streamlining the paperwork? Is it maybe not having any paperwork? (gasps) Can you do that? I don't know. Figure it out. Can you? Go to where other people won't and where there are very few people doing the thing and you will make more money. The easiest things you can do are the two that I just mentioned. Do specialty procedures and build a patient-centric office. And I spent way more time talking about the specialty procedures because that's my primarily what we're talking about. But if you build a patient-centric office, bang zoom to the moon, Alice. You can do it. It's amazing what it will do. It is amazing what it will do for you. Okay? So, I am dedicated to your freedom. I'd encourage you to head over to the titaniumpractice.com to get a copy of our ebook, Forging Your Freedom. I want you to know that it is later than you think. And so it is time for you to make a change. You need to make a change in your office to make sure that you are moving in the direction of freedom. And I can help you do that. There's more information over at Titanium Practice, but until then, 
I say goodbye, and I can't wait to talk to you again at the next episode, all right? Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to the Titanium Practice Podcast with your host, Dr. Stephen Freeman. Please hit the like and subscribe button and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Titanium Practice. Questions or comments? Send an email to info at titaniumpractice.com. Join us next time to help turn your average practice into a titanium practice.